Hi there, my name is Nathan, but I go by Ned. Here on YouTube, I'm Neddy the Noodle, and you guys know me as the one who has made the survival stories among a bevy of other kinds of ARC videos. For the past 1,000 days, as of this recording, I have created a video every single one of those days. And I did this as an experiment because I figured one day I'd you know look back and find it really cool to see how much I've changed or circumstances have changed, that kind of thing. And I was right. So what happened? Right off the bat, you know, I'm going to be discussing mental health in this video. I'm not afraid to talk about my own experience. Life is all over the place for everyone. And I hope by putting this out here and giving a glimpse of my story, as well as sort of the result of a personal experiment, uh, you might learn something interesting. I'm turning 21 years old this November, but when I started this video diary log, I had just turned 18 and I had a lot of life experiences ahead of me. Most of my story was told in this room. Some of it was in that room. Others were in random places. And more recently, it's been told from this place here. But without further ado, let's actually get into it. We start on day one, December 17th, 2019. I had just turned 18, and my life up until that point had been very isolating. I have really nice parents, um, but due to my circumstances of both how I was raised and my medical condition, I was almost entirely homeschooled growing up. I think most people don't understand what that means or what it's like, but all you really need to know is that homeschooled kids just have to catch up with the rest of the world, especially if they're isolated from society as much as I was. I'm still today in the process of catching up on the sort of plethora of generational media that most people exist around in you know, whichever generation they're a part of. That's one of the things that connects people of similar ages, their shared experiences in the shows that played on TV as they were kids, or you know the music they listened to, um, or the social and economic issues going on at the time. But while everyone else was connecting over those things, I was by myself playing video games. Thus, that was reflected in these early videos. So this is day one of my recording uh, every day. I hadn't learned how to talk to people in the real world, and I was struggling with a neurological condition called Attention Deficit Disorder, which, namely, I wasn't aware of until about two and a half years later. So that contributed to my somewhat slow, quiet behavior as well. For those of you who have heard the term thrown around, usually used as an adjective, ADD is a condition that is different for everyone who has it, but it's characteristic of having serious difficulties maintaining attention, either being too distracted or not distracted enough or not, you know, being able to hold attention on something for long enough, as well as hyperactivity, impulsiveness, low self-esteem, and difficulty understanding and interpreting what people are saying. These are some of the symptoms that I've had my whole life, but until more recently, I didn't realize they were caused by ADD. Day 100 was the first milestone of this video log series, and this is about all I had to say. Uh, this is day 100. Whoa. <laughs> it's day 100. Now, while the first 100 days didn't have anything particularly interesting happen, almost right after, I began to host an ARC server cluster that I called Vanilla Evolved. Basically, my entire life at that point was dedicated to running the server and ensuring it was online and functional for all the players. Some of the people who joined that cluster would go on to become some of my best friends online. People like Nacho and Shellborn, if you've seen the Journey's Core videos, for example. Um, hey, that man, that, that, that monkey. <laughs> I saw it once in a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Over the next couple months, I continued to run this ARC cluster and play on it as basically all I did with my life other than school. And when I say that, I'm not exaggerating. Literally, this was like all I did with my free time. Day 167, I decided, hey, why don't I bleach my hair? I'm generally open to new things, so I did it with the help of my sister and made it a little darker blonde a couple days later. But let's pause it for a second, because day 170 marked a time when I talked about the stress I was under by managing and playing on the server with all of my time. See, the issue was in the fact that Vanilla Evolved was public, meaning anyone could join, and it had virtually no admin intervention because I didn't like that kind of thing at the time. This is a terrible way to manage a public server unless you want your life to be drained from you. 
and as an 18-year-old, this meant I very quickly forced myself into a life of constant human resources management. Except I wasn't getting paid beyond a Patreon that I eventually set up to fund the computer parts to build my own server PC. My stress back then was caused by just how difficult this constant management of players, griefing incidents, and gameplay that I had to take into consideration on a daily basis. Today has been the most stressful day that I've ever had whilst running this server cluster on Arc. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, why didn't I just quit? Why not just shut down the server if it was causing me this much stress? Well, the answer is that I liked it. I like managing people, servers, communities. I, I thrived off of it. As much as it was hell because of how I set it up and the shortcomings that I just wasn't willing to compromise on, it was something I enjoyed. I like working with people, and back then I didn't even care that I wasn't really earning anything from it. Within the next few months, I graduated from my online high school with a diploma which uh, apparently says I did a thing. Nice. Fast forward to the next era, you might say. Day 282, which was December 25th, 2020. After continuing to run that insane server cluster, which at that point was now on a dedicated server PC, I had just finished my first big video project. And that project was ARK, the survival stories for Helena Walker. Those of you who have seen it know what I'm talking about. This was the first time working with lots of body actors, and looking back, it is especially hard not to cringe. The water is simply teeming with shoals of megalodons. But at the time, it was the first video I made and published that actually garnered some serious attention, and it was also the first time I almost couldn't believe I was the one making the video I was staring at in my editor. I was like, this is something I would watch. How, how am I the one making this right now? I released the video today, um, it's, it's, doing, it's doing okay, uh, so tired right now, god damn it, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm working on the next one. <laughs> How I did it was I took the skills I'd started to build from creating videos over the years as a kid, but then also in the creation of evolution guides back in 2020, and applied those on a larger scale with body actors. Those body actors actually consisted of players, um, of people that came from my server cluster at the time, which definitely helped because it was just you know, people who wanted to help make the videos and who already knew who I was, so they were able to join in pretty easily. With their help volunteering as body actors, combined with the hours I put in to film and you know plan everything, as well as a chunk of money just out of pocket to pay for the voiceover from Yanni Harris, I created the first survival story and thus the first video to visualize and narrate Ark's lore in depth. Just what that would mean is something I did not anticipate really at the time. Over the next few months, I created more of these videos, and also at this point, I had started my first semester of college at an in-state university. The trouble was, it was completely online because of COVID. But the fact my entire high school experience was also online, and I had met no friends through it just to then thrust myself into a brand new, yet ironically same old online education as a freshman in college, was salt on the wound. I wanted to get out. I, I wanted to be around people my own age, but I just needed to wait a little bit longer. On November 12th, 2020, uh, or day 3.30, I turned 19. It is the 12th of November, 2020. I've turned 19 years old. This was also the day that marked a series of videos where I started to kind of freak out. I'd always dreamed of becoming a YouTuber as a kid, but that kind of died out as I became more and more um, jaded, I guess. <laughs> I realized it wasn't realistic to think that I could ever become a YouTuber, um, but those next few days started to really dawn on me because I was like, oh, okay, um, this is happening. Just a huge influx of subscribers and all that, and, and it was just really wild. It seems like uh, my work is paying off. To add to the confusion, I had never gotten a job in my life at this point. 
um, and actually still haven't to this day. I've never been employed somewhere. But back then I didn't know what it meant to make money. I didn't know, I didn't have a reference, right? Um, you know, was $70 in a day from passive income a lot? Was that going to be how every day was going forward? You know, just for having these videos exist? The answer for anyone who knows what getting paid on YouTube is like is of course no, but because it was a first for me, I was just, you know, kind of in shock. I made $70 yesterday for doing nothing. Uh, I literally just sat around. <laughs> I sat around and just $70 in my YouTube account. $70. Within the next few months, I started to question whether I was getting an inflated ego because of the whole YouTube YouTuber thing. This was on my mind like all the time back then, likely because of ADD. And because of that, I was making very strong efforts to offset my suspected inflated ego by being very soft-spoken and overly careful with what I said online. Even after huge milestones, you know, giant projects with tons of people that I was super proud of, there was still like a sense of fear that people would think I was self-absorbed for just being myself, being loud or trying to be funny. Um, so I, I just had a really serious and monotone speaking voice in a lot of my older videos. For example, the ending credits of our like rock bowl survival story. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video and thank you to everyone who chose to work on this project. It's been really fun to film and also sort of scary. This fear, low self-esteem and anxiety was something that I learned how to deal with eventually, but at this point in my life, it was just the beginning of what was a pretty dark time for me, which is ironic. You'd expect uh, getting, getting famous uh, and making money is something I would have been rejoicing in, but uh, it kind of just made things more intense and more, more anxiety ridden. It raised the stakes, which I embraced, but with all the side effects that came with it. Fast forward a couple months, it's day 400, and also the day that I moved into a new room. Wow, it actually sort of occurs to me, this looks very similar to uh, how my old room did. With the uh, closet there being shown. I wonder if I should show just this instead. I was pretty happy to have a change of environment, despite it being you know, right across the, the hall from where I was before. I also had just begun my second semester in college, which was, again, completely online. It was kind of a blur, to be honest, because that's just how online school is, especially for someone with ADD who gets distracted easily and zones out a lot. But on the bright side, this would be my last fully online semester of college. We skip now to June 11th, 2021, day 540. It was on this night that I had a mental breakdown. Nothing like that had happened for me before, really, not on that scale. All of the stress from managing Vanilla Evolve, that server cluster that I was running from my home, um, you know, had sort of just built up um, both for all the software and the hardware problems. Um, it had been 15 months at that point that I'd been running that server cluster. It was 10 arc maps or something like that. And at that point, I shut it down. I, I closed all the servers and I just cried that night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, I couldn't handle it anymore. All, all that stress uh, from my life consisting of a constant management game where I was ensuring the server PC was functional, all the maps were online running, everyone was happy, not getting griefed. Uh, it all just kind of crashed down onto me. Shortly after, I, I announced that I would be shutting down the server cluster. Leading up to this point, it felt like my mind was out of control, trying to make sure my community was intact and satisfied while neglecting hanging out with my family or really doing anything fun. I mean, I loved the game. It was still fun to play the game. And, and obviously there's that element of, of wanting to manage things. It's, it, I thrive off of that. But just because you enjoy some kind of work or management, um, the sort of the stress might be there, especially if you're not really getting compensated for it, um, which I didn't mind at the time. It was just, I was stressed. So much had built up. So when I did that and sort of just shut down and, and announced it, um, that was really the first break from, from all that server management stuff that I'd experienced in over a year. It was, it was pretty liberating to escape that. You know, I felt free. I wasn't like getting paid 10 cents an hour. 
you know? <laughs> a month after I shut down Vanilla Evolved and uploaded all its saves to the cloud so people could still use them, I started up a new cluster which I called Arc Journeys Core. I couldn't help myself, but this time I did it right. I rented from a server provider, which I'm not even going to tell you the name of because they, they, they do not deserve recognition. At the time, I didn't know that they had really bad servers, and it was kind of my first entrance into long-term server renting with a provider, which had also sponsored me at the time. Journey's Core is a cluster that I still have up today, and all the maps have been running the same, you know, with a new provider, um, and it's really just a gated community for patrons of mine. So I started that new cluster and, and I was recording all of it to later put in a series of videos, you know, much later on. But uh, that summer I started to get sick. I was born with a recessive genetic disorder called PCD or primary ciliary dyskinesia, which disables the cilia and the respiratory system and causes people afflicted with it to have a constant cough and frequent sinus and lung infections. If I don't do breathing treatments every day, my airways become less powerful and my lungs will get infected. Sometimes, despite my breathing treatments, the infection gets too bad and I'll end up in the hospital. The stress from knowing the bill will, you know, come out of my own pocket for whatever insurance doesn't pay for, instead of, you know, my parents, like it did as when I was a kid, um, that sort of caused me a lot of anguish and it really pissed me off at the time because it was a transitional phase in between, you know, being a sort of a trying to rely on your healthcare as a kid moving into being an adult. Antibiotics aren't working. I've been on them for almost a week. Sulfa. It's a fucking sulfa drug. This is one of the strongest... One of the stronger antibiotics. I would then end up in the hospital within a few weeks, which helped me, you know, come to terms with being an adult with chronic illness. I had to record these couple logs in the hospital bed while I was on IV antibiotics. This is day 580. This is for the 22nd of July 2021. But I got home and I enjoyed the last few weeks of my summer before what was one of the most life-changing experiences I was about to have. College! In fact, basically all of my classes for the first semester of my sophomore year were in person. I felt ready and determined to experience what I'd been waiting so many years to have. Around this time, I had also started a long-term online relationship um, that summer. I'm going to avoid giving any details about the person for their own privacy, but they were a fan of my channel and already that kind of felt like an issue, but I just kind of ignored it. It was really the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that. The relationship became more and more serious and developed throughout my first semester. And most of my memories looking back at that semester, aside from the fun and not so fun projects, involved this person. It was long distance. I, I flew them out uh, at some point so we could meet in October. And, you know, writing the script for this video and going through this footage is still hard. Relationships are complicated, and I'm really not going to talk about it in this public video, but I learned a lot in that relationship, and it lasted for about five months until I ended it. This had a ripple effect in the online communities I was a part of and created on a pretty small scale. Um, but after I broke up with this person, I was a bit detached. The experience had definitely shaken me, as anyone's first real relationship probably will. It's these kinds of experiences that just happen. You know, sometimes they're dumb and sometimes you'll get hurt from them, but sometimes they're the kind of thing that was necessary to, to tell you what you do or do not want from your life. But I try to leave it in the past and just keep moving forward. We fast forward to the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022. This was January 1st. <coughs> Uh, it was the 1st of January 2022 today. Uh, it's a grind day. I grinded. Because it was a new year, I really wanted to commit to something. And that was, for me, making a video each week. So on the 1st, I grinded out this Arc Lore video. And from then on, I made a video each week for a pretty good few months. During that time, it was the most challenging semester that I had experienced at college. This one web design class made me almost consider changing my major, but along the way I also made some friends. Some of which I had already kind of met in a computer lab in my last semester, but we didn't really, really talk much. They were my first real friends that I actually hung out with 
and um, they're really cool. Oh, see that? That's literally the weakest enemy in the game. I've never failed a class before, so I don't know what to do. It's all because of Ned. So just come out. Okay, just. No, no, no! no. Oh my god, oh my god, no! No! If any of you guys are watching this video, hi. At that point, you know, I hadn't really been in many friend groups in person before. Um, since I grew up on the internet, it was just different. It was really different. And, you know, sometimes I'd, I was making progress and other times I was extremely anxious and frustrated. And I blamed this on being homeschooled, when really the, the actual problem was, was unrelated. The class projects I had, which were then uh, so very challenging, um, were difficult, especially because I couldn't hold my attention on them. I didn't know why at the time, because you know, nobody ever told me that I seemed like I had a, a condition, neurological condition. They just kind of, you know, the impression was, oh, that's, that's just Ned. He's just, he's just like that. There's a particular log I, I found uh, just here that illustrates how frustrated I was. You know, some, some nights I would just, you know, come home and I would have so much on my mind from the day and the social experiences and the classwork that I would just, like, I didn't know how to deal with stress. And I was just, I just sit there, I would just sit there and, and, and think. There was so much on my mind during that semester, uh, yet I had nothing to say. I, I felt like more than ever, something was wrong with me and I didn't know how to deal with it. Eventually though, I got help. I sought out a counselor by myself and through him, I discovered attention deficit disorder. My symptoms, after I learned about it, you know, I was, I, you know, I researched it after and my symptoms fit perfectly, you know, the irritability, the low self-esteem, difficulty in concentrating and remembering things. But at the same time, I didn't outright say that I had it because I didn't want to be one of those people who's like, I have this mental disorder, this neurological condition, uh, just because I um, assumed so and I'm self-diagnosing myself or something. So I just sort of erred on the side of caution and just observed and thought about it. And even that step itself was really eye-opening and it helped me. It helped me feel like there wasn't something wrong with me or, or if there was, I at least knew what it was now and I could, you know, have a name for it. I wanted to make sure that I you know, actually got diagnosed before anything. It was really around this time that the semester was starting to end and um, that sort of just transitioned into the summer where my friends went home and, and yeah, summer just kind of kind of happened. In June, I was able to get an evaluation from my doctor for ADD and I was prescribed a type of drug called a stimulant. It's pretty ecstatic about this because you know, hey, as far as I was concerned, this could make me feel like a regular person. You know, I'd been I'd been researching what it made people feel like for a while. And, you know, once I got a prescription, I was ready to see how it would make me feel. The 1st of July, 2022. Um, I got this. So cool. Um, but yeah, I'm going to see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know what to expect yet, but we'll see. And the next day, I took it that morning, and this is what I had to say. Within about 35 minutes to 40-ish minutes, I started feeling different. Um, any feelings of, like, anxiety or anxiousness just kind of, like, drifted away. They kind of drifted away, and then I realized, I was like, wait, I have complete clarity right now. Like, I can just... I'm just here in the moment and I felt amazing. Becoming medicated properly marked a significant change in my life. Before it was always the same thing. It was it was hard to get out of bed, not physically, but but mentally. And by the time the day was over, I was so emotionally exhausted that I didn't really have much to say. I was just kind of zoned out. But once I got medication, everything everything just changed. By the end of the day, I'm just like I'm not overwhelmed, I'm just here, and I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm gonna go to sleep now and can't wait for the next day. And that's, that's how it is now. Throughout the rest of the summer, everything was just really good. I had at least like one vacation, so I went down to the beach for a couple days with some family. Day 949. The 3rd of August, 2022. All right, I gotta watch him though. 
see you tomorrow. Bye. Made this fucking monstrosity of a video. <laughs> And I had the opportunity to see one of my friends again who I had met online about a decade ago. She's really awesome. Since then, I've started my junior year of college and I've got to hang out with my friends again. And in these first few weeks back to school, I have wrapped up the largest video project I've ever created, which releases on September 25th. So, was it worth it? And am I finally done recording these daily videos? Yes, it was worth it. Um, and yes, for now I am, I am done recording these, these daily videos. I might pick them up again sometime in the future and do them properly because my god, there were several errors and, and mistakes I made along the way uh, with days and forgetting to record every now and then uh, where I'd have to go back and, you know, it's just a whole mess. So if I do it again, I'll do it right. I'll do it properly and, and sort of log it very, very carefully. But with that said, this has been a glance into my life for the past three-ish years. I think the greatest takeaway of having made these videos has been the retrospection, as much as that's probably very obvious. More importantly, if you're struggling with things in your life and you don't know why or you, you, know, you feel like there's something wrong with you, I want you to know that there is a place for you in this world. Like, when I was struggling, I would always see people who seemed put together, they would always, you know, give the impression that it's so easy to, to be okay. And, and it felt like such a disconnect. It felt like they didn't understand me and that they never would, you know, and that, and that there's just two kinds of people in the world. There's people that are okay and there's people that aren't okay. And it's not true. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows that because I know how many people have something that makes their life so hard and i just want you to know that you're awesome people can help it might be one hell of a process especially if you're in america but help is there and you just have to find it Thank you all so much for watching this video. It's gonna be weird going forward, not making a day video every night or sometimes during the day, but I'm really happy to be able to reflect on my experiences and share them with you. I am super excited for what you'll all be seeing very soon on the channel. Also, I should mention that if you're looking to rent your own ARC server, go ahead and click on my referral code in the description to get 10% off your own G portal server today. They host really good servers and I use them myself, so please do check them out, they're, they're great. But as always, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you in the next video. Good luck, survivors. <laughs>